I'll be reviewing the dissertation of famous Kurovic, mm -hmm. who graduated in 2015, and he is currently an associate professor at George Mason University. His research interests lies in the areas of social computing, semantic computing, crisis informatics, web intelligence, and human AI collaboration. So his thesis statement, uh, thesis uh, title was Mining Behavior of Citizen Communities to Improve Cooperation with the Organizational Actors. Here, uh, in, 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 in his entire thesis, he focuses on this work with the uh, disasters, uh, uh, disaster crisis event where he tries to map uh, the support seekers and support providers. And uh, so if we just go over the thesis statement, which is prior knowledge and interplay features of uh, users, their content and network efficiently model intent and engagement for cooperation of strategic sensor communication. Yeah, so, so let's, let's point out that people, content, network, Heuristics that Amit uses. It's it's it says here's content and network, but it's the same thing. Yes, mm -hmm. that's his uh, Google Scholars uh, couple of uh, two weeks back. So he has 1600 uh, 61 citations. Now uh, coming on to his thesis statement. So there were three important uh, highlights: prior knowledge, model intent and engagement, and citizen sensor network. So he mentions, uh, sorry, citizen sensor communication. He mentions that uh, after uh, Web 2.0, so before, uh, un unlike Web uh, 1.0, where uh, only internet was the information provided and we were just uh, consuming all the information, Web 2.0 and later citizens have become the source of information and data where they are generating millions uh, of data points every minute like Twitter, like Facebook, and so on. So he says that that data, now citizens becoming the source of uh, source of data and the entities which are generating data points, that can further be utilized using prior knowledge. So in prior knowledge, he identifies uh, four different uh, major types of knowledge which he uses in his study, declarative knowledge pattern, Declarative knowledge pattern essentially uh, tries to abstract similar kind of entities. Like table and share both are familiar. So how to abstract those entities uh, within uh, using WordNet within the uh, textual data that you have. Social knowledge indicators. Social that is a kind of association association, right? In the WordNet, there is a format of that. Yes. Social knowledge indicators. Uh, uh, this this kind of knowledge refers to uh, come, the cyber linguistic knowledge which uh, identifies the start and end of a conversation. So those are the social knowledge indicators which he says. Further contrast knowledge patterns are uh, patterns which in his work he creates with the help of uh, domain experts. So let's say for uh, uh, support uh, provider, the contrast pattern can be Anyone, uh, anyone with clothes or what, what's what your contrast? What is, what is contrast? So, contrastive here is the the pattern in which or, or the sequence in which certain entities are used, certain words are used. Like, well, yeah, sure. Speakers and suppliers was the was the main thing that we were worried about. So, if you gather all of the social media content in a disaster, you know, some portion of it is is people seeking resources and some portion is people providing resources. Oh, okay. So you need to know okay. what the linguistic <coughs> indicators are that contrast those two groups okay. in order to do the analysis properly. You don't want to lump them all into one vat and do a topic analysis it doesn't really help. You. Okay. So like uh, one of the contrast patterns for uh, someone who's seeking help can be uh, victim URL or where victim URL okay. and someone giving uh, can be uh, something like growth needed some and those things and next coming to model uh, intent and engagement so here he uh, identifies and specifically uh, 
specifically talks about how these uh, intents, which he understands using this prior knowledge of support seekers and support givers are important. And then he converts this entire problem into a multi-class classification problem, which he solves uh, in his uh, particular paper. Uh, so to mm -hmm. my, sorry. <laughs> Further, he also mentions how uh, different, so uh, th there was this work, uh, I, I think in social media, you have this uh, specific work where you identify different set of groups which talk about different uh, set of topics. So let's say there will be a group which will talk about just political news or will be more focused on that. There will be another group which talks about, let's say, cricket matches or some sports leagues. Okay. Yes. Right. So he says he tries to identify how these different uh, content divergence or these different uh, content clusters are relevant in this uh, um, modeling the intent of support seekers and support givers and how it uh, completely uh, overall helps the uh, classification problem of the support seeker and support giver. So this was his uh, uh, entire thesis work. Now I also. Uh, I also have two of his papers. One of the first one is his most cited papers, which is emergency relief coordination on social media automatically match and resource requests and offers. So here, uh, using the prior knowledge, he uh, the, the major contribution of this paper is using the prior knowledge, building a corpora of rich information about requests and offers for donation coordination. So again, he uses all these prior knowledge, which I just briefly talked about. And here, one of the major uh, one of the major concerns, it's both advantage and disadvantage, which he mentioned is that he uh, like they are focusing in that paper for high precision than recall. So they are focusing on more correct data than overall the quantity of data that they are receiving. And uh, further going on to the most interesting paper for me was the intent classification of short text on social media. So here. Uh, they use a multi-class intent classification using a uh, case. So uh, their use case was crisis event. And uh, again, here uh, the basic <coughs> idea was to integrate these different uh, knowledge guided patterns, which we see how, here. How many classes? Two. Only two. Yes. So how how he how they generally uh, actually three. So how they uh, generally model it, it is. So for support seeker, if they are modeling it, support seeker is positive, then all the rest two. Like uh, support given and neutral, which doesn't have any. So are is it classification for it to each organization? Yes. And uh, there are three classes. Yes. One is support given, support uh, seeker, and third one is like which is. Yes. Other, so, okay. so one of the example is uh, as we see on the screen what, is anyone. What is the minimum first one? First Monday is the, the publication. The I'm, oh. I'm surprised by that. The, the first, the first, I haven't looked them up lately, but um, now First Monday is not the most prestigious computer science journal. Um, he's got a couple of other pubs in more. Yes, means well. there are a lot of them, but these were the two which uh, the, I just put the most cited and uh, the one which I found most interesting. Okay. So both were on First Monday. Okay. Uh, so one of the examples of uh, from the data is anyone know where the nearest Red Cross is? I want to give blood today to help victims of Hurricane Sandy. Now this particular tweet is uh, tagged as offering help. So this is support giver. And yes, now one of the major uh, disadvantage of his work, and which uh, I think he uh, it was a couple of people asked this question to him while his dissertation defense was going on was how does he model this uh, uh, the problem or uh, handle the challenge of new entity new emerging entity so that that was something which wasn't handled in his work and he uh, yes <laughs> he kind of handled that i think that is it I think uh, Renjit, Janendra, anybody involved in yeah. FCC, this is the foundation of yeah, that. I was thinking of that that work. That I should do yeah, you should look at that. But there, but there are, um, I don't know, can you bring it up? Yes. <laughs> There's other, bring them up on Google Scholar and I'll. There's a link.
I can I can increase the so um so, so if this is sorted by is most popular, this is not one of the ones that you so I think most like it is <coughs> oh okay, all right. Well, not just because I'm on it, but I, I'd say that you know both of these are pretty well cited and fairly technical and in good places. Here's part of cooperative work. So Ren and Jindra. Then you have your. I would look at that. Um, there, there's a couple others. Uh, this this one. That's the one yeah, that's identifying seekers and suppliers. I have already because yeah. it was uh, strange, but most cited. So I would just encourage you guys to look at the more technically oriented ones than, than the first Monday. There were three versions of Twitters. Uh, three Twitters. Oh, uh, I don't. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Okay. All right, so what time is it? Ooh. Okay, so Savannah, I think you probably have time for Sarasi, unless there's another, unless somebody else wants to go. No, you don't have to stop this. You, uh, this happened continue. Savannah, did you hear us? Yeah, I heard you. I'm gonna share my screen here. All righty, I think y'all should be able to see my screen. Almost, it's it's thinking about it. There we go. Okay, thinking about it. Okay, cool. Um, let's see if I can make it slideshow. Is that yeah, still up? It's, it's on, uh, you know, editing mode. It's not on slideshow mode. Kind of facing the same problem. Huh? She's kind of. Facing the same problem, the same people. That only wants to do it here. Um, all right. What are you seeing, Savannah? Are you seeing editing? All sharing and reshare. Yeah. I'll share the whole screen possibly. Is that better? No, it's, well, I think you might have to live with this. It's, see if you can even change. Um, Slides, I'm not sure you can. Does that change? No. Oh, gosh. So stop sharing. Is, well, you did just set the stop sharing. So try, try again. Let me see. All righty, does that work? Uh, yes. Perfect. Okay. Yes, yes. All right. Um, so I had um, domain specific knowledge extraction from a web of data. Um, or is that uh, many different downstream natural language processing tasks? 
Um, am I still here? Um, yeah, you are, but it switched back to the title page. But the year would be like what? What year was Sarasi out before him? And I yeah. think. Yeah. Uh, 2016 ish, I think. I don't have it in front of me. Okay. Same time. It's the same parallel. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry, Savannah. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> oh, God. I have no idea what the problem is there. Oh, well, it was here too, so we don't think it's you. Okay. So just, I think the solution is to stop sharing and start sharing. All right, we'll try this again. Um, you know, while you are doing this in India, we have a very interesting little picture. We used to have radio, and sometimes it just worked. And well, you know. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very good. So, Remote thing. So you can still do the There. Okay. Hey, we have the first title slide. Now let's see. Oh, yes, yay, okay. All right, we have a slide you can talk to. All right, um, yeah, so the main idea here is that um, many different downstream natural language processing tasks require domain-specific knowledge. Um, so for example, you can think about entity recognition. Um, so what is an entity? and mean different things in um, different contexts. Um, so for example, you can think of, you know, who is an entity in a med medical setting is a bit different than like who is an entity in um, a fiction novel. Um, but this is also sort of relevant for things like question answering, um, data analytics applications and knowledge discovery. Um, so knowledge graphs are one one way of representing this kind of information, um, and we serve they serve to represent structured relationships in a machine readable format. Um, that said, sort of knowledge graphs are this increasing area of research interest, and they're um, there's a lot more of them available. They're increasing in size, and um, they increase in sort of the um, different content areas that they cover. Um, so, you know, in general, it's a great thing that um, knowledge graphs are covering more domains. Um, however, this results in really large graphs that include knowledge that might be irrelevant for your particular application. Um, and these large graphs increase computation time, and then they may generate less accurate results on downstream tasks because there's irrelevant information in there that your um, process has to sift through in order to find um, what you're looking for. Um, so one different one way of approach addressing this is to um, prune the knowledge graph so that they only include information that's relevant for your downstream task. Um, and then we're also looking at sort of automatic domain identification. Um, so at least at the time, there was um, a tendency that you know a lot of different domains would be identified via manual inspection of the data. Um, so you'd need to find some humans who can adequately judge what domain. Um, the data is and then have them mark it manually. Um, but this is not really scalable and we need automatic methods for um, classifying domains. Um, so their proposed method, they use um, different tags to identify domains. So for example, the tag geography, um, and then they integrate this information um, with information that's available from other knowledge sources. And they specifically draw them from a free-based um, database hierarchy. Um, and then the approach here is intended to be generalizable to other settings. Um, so it's not specifically dependent on this free base hierarchy. Um, you could use other um, sources of information as well. Um, so they go through a series of steps. Um, so first, um, identify different instances, um, retrieve them and their corresponding labels. Um, and then they're and then step two, create a category hierarchy. So um, in this step, they're retrieving free base types for each different instance. And then in step three, they're higher merging um, these different category hierarchies. Um, in step four, select appropriate hierarchies. Um, so the I, basically not all of the hierarchies here are relevant or significant for a particular data set. Um, and so you wanna remove some of those. 
um, and then retain the one, they retain the ones that have the most um, common domain roots. Um, and then step five, they're assigning a frequency count to each of the terms, and then they're using this as sort of a relative uh, measure of relative importance. Um, so evaluation, um, it did evaluation on 30 LOD data sets on a variety of domains um, and had users rate the acceptability of the identified domains. Um, so they find that most data sets. Yeah, Savannah, what's LOD? Um, Linked open data. Yeah. Yes, open data. that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so these are, um, I thought, it, so these domains are things like movies and um, like TV shows, I think, and some things along those lines. And so they basically had some users do some sort of common sense ratings based on these. Um, so in general, they find that most data sets performed uh, pretty well, um, but the approach does not identify all prominent topic domains. And this is possibly because those um, entities work did not exist in the free base hierarchies. Um, so um, usefulness for data set search. So they did um, two different um, a two-step baseline user study. Um, so in step one, they asked users to generate a bunch of terms for describing a domain, um, and then use those to receive, retrieve 10 search results for each term. Um, and then in step two, they asked 27 different users to identify which ones are their preferred results, um, and then found that their um, proposed system performed second best. Um, and in indexes fewer domains. Um, so then they looked at um, searching a CCAN um, data hub repository. Um, and so they find here that um, the approach provided um, high recall for certain um, domains, but some others had poor performance, which could be due to system shortcomings or inaccuracies in the data repository. Yeah, let me just interrupt for a minute. I think this has bearing on what we were talking about this morning the library search right. tool thing and constraining the graph that you're using to guide recommendations. Please go back and I have a question there. Which one? Sorry. Yes, like, go back. Go back. Yeah. Yeah, but in this is fewer women, what the, what does that mean? I'm sorry, what is what? What does it mean to index fewer domains? I think it it points to fewer relevant Knowledge graphs, Savannah, step two, system performs second oh. best. So I think my understanding is that, um, that so they're comp comparing to basically that this sort of one system that was manually created had more, um, more defined domain areas, I think. And I would have to go back and look at the dissertation to see exactly what those domain areas were. Um, okay. Fine. Go ahead. Press. Okay. Um, and so the uh, second part, they're looking at identifying um, domain specific subgraphs with non hierarchical relationships. Um, so you can think about um, different types of relationships between entities. Um, so you can think of hierarchical relationships. Um, so, for example, a chair is a member of the category furniture, uh, but you can also think about relationships that are not hierarchical. Um, and it's probably a good idea for um, knowledge graphs to represent these kinds of things differently. Um, and so they demonstrate this method um, with the domains book and movie. Um, so some existing methods used um, n hop navigation techniques um, where you define a value for n and then retrieve all relations within this value. Um, however, this method still returns some irrelevant information. Um, and so the key issue here is that you want to return only relationships that are relevant to your specific domain. Um, so, for example, like um, concepts that might have, you know, really different meanings in different domains, you'd want to, you know, say exclude all of the um, meanings from other domains that are not relevant. 
Um, so their approach, they use um, domain specificity measures um, that are designed to identify relationships that are relevant to the target domain. And then they use two different relationships. Um, so direct relationships are um, first hop entities and then indirect relationships are more than one hop away from the end domain entities. Um, so they use two different ways of measuring relationships in the knowledge graph. Um, so type uses the inter um, types of intermediate entities to determine domain specificity, and then path uses the domain specificity of intermediate relationships. Um, for evaluation, they compute similarity between entities um, using an existing book and a movie data set, um, and then evaluate the approach on um, graph reduction, accuracy impact, and runtime performance. Um, in general, they find that the domain-specific subgraphs are 80% um, smaller in terms of the number of paths than their parent graphs. Um, they reduce computational complexity over tenfold, and in many cases, they have better accuracy than the parent um, subgraphs, or sorry, the parent knowledge graphs. Um, and then the last um, section was focused on identifying domain-specific subgraphs with hierarchical relationships. Um, so this is approach is focused on um, hierarchical relationships and uses an NHOP-based graph navigation approach. They extract three different types of relationships. Um, so type semantics um, covers um, relationships that are based on category label. Um, so for example, you can, uh, if you have the string documentary films about horror, um, you have horror film and documentary in that um, string. Um, the second is lexical semantics. Um, so this is focused on um, different properties of individual words. Um, the last is structural semantics. Um, so these are semantics that are extracted from the hierarchical relationships between items in the graph. Um, results here, they reduce the number of paths uh, by between 40 and 50%. Um, they do not compromise accuracy and the results um, outperform a supervised learning approach. And that is all I have. So I have, I have a question from Amitabha about all this. So all of this complexity concern and number of paths and all that is because they are doing operations directly on the graph. Yes. And so how would you re-envision re this problem in a different representation? Or would you continue to operate on the graph? Mm. OK, so that's a good question. So, okay, no, I, I have no issue if I take graph separated processes. So okay. today, computation is not a problem. Because see, language models are trained on a billion dollars. Okay, yeah, so you'll you'll be able to get a lot of stuff, but right. are you going to compromise? Uh, that's a different story. So I have I have no problem if I only process graph. Mm -hmm. And I have no problem if I do language modeling and neural space But if these two has to come together, Yes. So then I am sure how because see, this is very structural, you know, data structure is very structured. Here everything is vector. You need a vector representation. So very two different systems. And how these two can merge, I have and I really don't know any technical solution exists. And I don't believe it will be able to make it soon. So that's my belief. Maybe I'm biased. Does the group agree with that? Yeah, I I, I Patrick, do you do you agree with that? With uh, what? That, that, that there's no clear pathway to merging vector-based computation with graph-based computation. There's no clear pathway for sure, but uh, uh, is it going to be impossible? I don't think so. Well, that's all about belief. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I will be biased. So I, I I don't think we'll be able to do this. I mean, we we'll keep talking about. This. But isn't that the sort of the whole point of knowledge infused learning is to yes, combine those yes. two I, mean, I, I, I believe we are very romantic about the idea. We, <laughs> to, we want to do it, but we really don't know how to do it. So that's where we are. I mean, that's my uh, you know, observation. Uh, we might be able to success, or this will be you know, lost in history if we were to do it in two more years or so. So, uh, <laughs> gosh, I hope, are we recording this? <laughs> <laughs> We're not to hear that. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, that's the. I mean, I have seen several such uh, new things come up in various times. That's the trade upon. It's a fine. I don't know. But domain knowledge is like very important. So, <laughs> that, no, 
I'm not questioning that. Okay. <laughs> okay. So see, look at look at this way. I mean, we are done. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But but we're just continuing on with this. So, so look look at you know the believer. I mean, this, I'm, I'm a little. I I, I did hard for it. So what this language one you say? You have a generic language. 